Hey, welcome to another game development episode where we're recreating The Legend of Zelda. Today we are going to cover two things. One is creating a debug screen very similar to this. Click on it. Where we get information about boundary boxes and X and Y coordinates and stuff like that for what we're going to collide with. And two is updating the ability for us to have two collision boxes. As you see, this blue box I have around me is the normal collision box that we want where we can collide with objects like the walls, um, which we want to be in a 16 by 16 grid, or if we were collecting hearts or anything like that, we want a big uh, collision mask, but we want a smaller collision mask for dealing with colliding with enemies. So we're going to deal with that as well. All right, to start off, we're going to add a toggle button. And in this case, we're going to use the F1 button on the keyboard to toggle whether or not the debug screen will be on or off. And then once that's on, we're going to go to the draw events of various objects and set those so that you can see the boxes around them. So first thing we'll do is we're going to add this to the game object because the game object is always there. So we go to systems and object game. And all we're gonna do is we're going to add another event, add event, and we're gonna say key release, and we'll go to the function keys, F1. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're going to the code, right click. We're gonna say global dot um, debug equals not global dot debug, debug. This is a very simple way of toggling back and forth. So if, if this was true, it's gonna say not true, so it's gonna set it to false, so then it's gonna be false, not false, it'll be equal to true. We're just gonna take this as well. Um, we're gonna put this in the create event. Um, should have done that first. And we're gonna to go to the create event, and we're just gonna set the global debug to start off as false. So now this will toggle it, but nothing's gonna happen. You're not gonna see anything happen. So let's go to our player. We're gonna go to player. We're gonna go to our draw event here. Let's add a comment, draw player. And what we're gonna do is we're going to add something here. We're gonna say if the global debug, I'm having trouble typing today. If the global debug is true, then we're gonna do something very simple. We're gonna say draw set color. So we get the set the color of whatever we're drawing on the screen. We're gonna say C underscore, uh, we'll do blue. Um, and there, there's all sorts of colors here that you can do. C aqua, black, blue, so on and so forth. So. You can check that out by right uh, middle clicking this and it'll give you all the colors that, that they have. We're gonna set the color and then we're gonna do, we're gonna draw the box. So you can do a draw rectangle. Um, and what we there's some built-in variables into uh, each object that we can use. And one of them is the bounding boxes. And so the things that you can do for uh, drawing a rectangle is you do the X1, which is the upper left-hand corner, y1 which is also well uh, x1 is um how far to the left that's the very left side y1 is the very top side y uh, x2 is the right side of the rectangle um, and y2 is the bottom and then you can choose whether or not it's an outline in our case it will be so the built-in variable that we're going to use is called bounding box um, and we're going to say left and that'll give us the left bounding box of whatever collision mask that we have um, for the character. And we're gonna do, for the Y, we're gonna say B box top, and then for the right, it's B box right and bottom. And then the last, we're gonna say outline is true, and that will draw, um, whoops. That will draw just the outline instead of filling it all in with the color. So we could test this out pretty easily. Okay, so right now I don't see anything. I'm gonna press F1 and you can see my bounding box. Now, as you saw in the intro, I had a bigger bounding box. That's because right now the bounding box is tied to the mask that's on the sprite. And the current sprite, 
Um, I think we're facing one of the directions. Uh, modify the mask and we'll zoom in. This is the this is the mask that's currently on it, and we don't want that mask. We want a bigger mask than that. And so we'll fix that in a minute. So we can add this this uh, code right here to any object that we want to show the outline. So in this case, let's say we want to go to the enemies, we're going to go to the enemy parent, and maybe we want to draw all the enemies bounding box. We'll just go down here, global debug, and let's say the color is red. Do that. I'm going to copy and paste that. So that was object parent enemy. So all enemies will now show that if they inherit from that. And then last, we're going to go to the walls. We're going to set this one. Um, and so we need to add a draw event. We're going to add a draw. Right click here. Draw. We'll also make this true. Um, so, and I think the last thing, we need to make this visible so it'll actually show up. Um, but it's not going to, because I added this draw of it, unless I said draw self, it's not going to actually going to draw this, this sprite at all. So let's close this and we'll rerun it. And we should now be able to see all the bounding boxes. Okay. So now pressing F1, I, oh, we don't have any walls in here, so we can't see those. Uh, these are just tiles. I didn't put actual wall objects in here. We can add that in a minute. So now we see the enemy and links bounding boxes. Now let's go ahead and add, um, let's update the code so that we have two masks for link. One is now going to be, uh, we're going to have a bigger mask for him for colliding with objects and then a smaller one for colliding with enemies. And so let's go open object player. And right here, we have a collision event with object pair enemy. We're going to have to change this. We're going to move this to somewhere else. We're actually going to cut this out and we'll delete this in just a second. We're going to go to the step event. We're actually going to add a new step event. Um, and so this one's going to be, um, we'll call it check collision with enemy. We'll add this in here. And now what we need to do is we need to add a new um, set of code. One is for the new masks, uh, and then one is for the collision event. So first thing we'll do is we're going to set the mask to, e um, to equal um, the sprite index. So what that means is, so you can set the mask index to say whatever sprite you want to be the mask for the collision event. And we do want this, the sprite index, the one we have been using for colliding with enemies. That's actually the one we want. But down here, after we're done checking for collision with enemies, we want to set the mask index equal to sprite player. And that is actually equal to this one, which is a complete 16 by 16 box. That's the mask that we're going to use after we're done checking for um, the collision with the enemy. And then you're going to see that bigger box as we're walking around. Um, if we collected hearts, it would use this mask. If we were running into walls, it would use this mask. So now we need to actually check for the, um, the enemy collision. And the way you could do that is we're going to set a new variable. So I'll var enemy. And we're going to make it equal to instance place at the x and y coordinate. So at links x and y coordinate, we're going to check if it hits object player, I mean, uh, sorry, object par enemy. So what this does is this returns the ID of an, of anything that it collides with, especially, uh, but only if it collides with this, this particular object, and it's going to return the ID of that. So if it does return something, we can actually do something with it. So what we say is, um, if enemy does not equal to, to no one, 
which is a special term in GameMaker, that would say we did collide with something. So now we can run this code. Copy and paste that in there. Now the only other thing that we need to change is this other doesn't make any sense because we're not using one of those types of collision. We're going to say enemy. And so now, this, this what we'll do is we'll set the mask to this. We check to see if we hit it. If we do, then we'll have the collision with the enemy. We, we deduct the damage from our HP. We create the invincibility frames for 30 seconds. And then right then we're gonna set the, the mask back to the bigger mask that we want. And that's all we have to change in that. So let's test that out. The way we'll test that out is we're gonna see the, the bigger blue box now. So now we've got the bigger blue box, which would be used for colliding with walls and, and sort of everything else, but there's a slightly smaller collision mask for dealing with enemies. Very, very slight change there. All right, let's add some walls just so we can make sure that we see all that working. So we're gonna go to our room. We're gonna close everything here. We're gonna go to our room and we're actually dealing with RM rooms right now. So let's open that one. Double clicking is not working for me. We'll zoom in here and let's go to tiles. I'm gonna add a few tiles real quick of the overworld. Let's just choose the rock and we're gonna put some random rocks in here to play with. And then we're gonna to go to objects. We're gonna go down here where it says sword and we're gonna to go to walls and object wall. So we can add little object walls everywhere we want to collide with rocks and we can even add we can just drag this one over like this and we'll drag this one down didn't quite do it there we go Copy and paste that, and just move it over there. So now we should actually see um, all of those work. Okay, so we've got the walls. Let's put up the debug. I hit F1 and we can now see everything and we are colliding with everything appropriately. So that all works correctly. All right, so that was it for this. Um, what we're gonna cover in the next episode is I have a, an improved uh, collision detection that's gonna help with subpixeling. Um, early when I made these videos, uh, the version that I put in place didn't work for subpixels besides 0.5. So if you said 0.6 or 0.1, it didn't work as far as movement and collision. And I've got a corrected version of that. And that's going to be the last thing we, that we should be doing with collisions. And then we're going to move on to the, uh, the building out of the world map. So, all right. Thanks again for watching. As always, if you have any questions, um, ask a question down in the comments below. And the files will be available on my Patreon page. All right. I'll see you guys next time.